So for this week's clinical file, we have Max. And Max is an 11-year-old child who presents with intense groin and anterior thigh pain after falling from a tree. The therapist suspects that the child has slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Which of the following risk factors is most likely to cause the suspected pathology. So we have A, femoral retroversion and obesity. B, hyperthyroidism and proximal muscle weakness. C, coxivalga. And D is low body mass index or low BMI. Cool. Let's go up to the top of this one. We're talking about slip capital femoral epiphysis. My question to you is, have you ever seen this concept come up before practice exams and all that? Yeah, you've seen it, right? Usually we're differentially diagnosing this with what other condition? Come on. Lake Caperthes disease, right? Cool. So you need to know a bit about this concept for sure to be confident and ready to go on the NPTE. Let's break this question down. At the top of it, it says Max, an 11-year-old child, presents with intense groin pain and anterior thigh pain after falling from a tree. Uh, so I already know that this child obviously has a skiffy. That's what we call it, a skiffy, right? Slip capital femoral epiphysis. And it's very common for that child to be in the range of 10 years old to 17. Uh, some texts will say that. Some other ones will say 12 to 15. As long as you're in that teenager age group, uh, you should be good to go, all right? Um, the fact that the patient have an intense groin anterior thigh pain, that's very consistent with slip capital femoral epiphysis, all right? So all of that is pretty straightforward at this point. Let's move into the next sentence. It says, the therapist suspects the child has slip capital femoral epiphysis. If you're not familiar with this uh, concept, let me slow up for a second and let's talk about it. Slip capital femoral epiphysis is a condition that is typically traumatic. All right, it's typically traumatic and it is affecting the uh, femoral growth plates, the femoral epiphyseal growth plate tend to see this in a child that's anywhere from 10 to 17. Typically, they do some type of activity. It could be a twist the wrong way. It could be a, a fall. But typically, the parents will say that we, we don't really know what happened. He kind of fell. He kind of fell, but it wasn't like a big accident, right? Slip capital femoral epiphysis happens typically because the, the growth plates in the femoral area are already weakened. Right. And so then the child has this this abrupt mechanical stress or maybe they're just just like overweight and they're putting a lot of stress through that femoral neck area and it causes that slippage. Now, it'd be a great thing for you to do to look this up online so you can actually see a picture of what I'm talking about when I say a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, like what that really looks like. I suggest you go on, like say YouTube, go on Google, something along the lines of that, and just take a look at what it looks like. All right, sounds good? So yeah, I see this in a male, uh, typically a teenager. We know that it's, it's in the area of that femoral neck. All right, cool. Now, the last sentence, the question stem, it says, which of the following risk factors is most likely to cause the suspected pathology? So right now, I'm looking for a risk factor of Skiffy, slip capital femoral epiphysis. For those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choices again. We got A, femoral retroversion and obesity. B is hyperthyroidism and proximal muscle weakness. C is cox of alga. D is low body mass index. Let's go through the answer choices. A says femoral retroversion and obesity. Is that a risk factor? I should say, are those risk factors? This answer has two parts to it. We got to make sure both of them are correct. Femoral retroversion, is that consistent? Is it a risk factor with a skiffy? The answer to that is absolutely. It actually is. Now, it can be worded a little differently sometimes. It could say uh, that the patient has less antiversion or the patient is in femoral retroversion. Both of those would be correct. Both of those are risk factors for uh, someone getting a skiffy. All right. Reason being is that one of the major reasons why someone gets slip capital femoral epiphysis is because of mechanical stress on the extremity 
mechanical stress on that femoral neck area that's very weak, the epiphyseal plate. And femoral retroversion is one of the deformities of the lower extremity that can cause a lot of mechanical stress on that femoral neck, all right? Now you may say, well, wait, hold on a minute. What about antiversion though, Coach K? Come on, doesn't antiversion cause that type of thing too? That extra stress? Well, here's the deal, it's natural for your body to be in antiversion. Like you should be in antiversion, that's normal, all right? The problem is when a person is having excessive antiversion maybe, or if the patient presents to you with femoral retroversion, those are the problems. But if your patient just was in normal antiversion, maybe the eight to 20 degrees of antiversion, well, yeah, that's pretty normal. All right. In most texts, they'll say eight to 15. But if as long as the patient's between eight to 20, you're good to go. All right. For for moral retroversion definitely is a risk factor for Skiffy is the bottom line. Are we good with that? But we need to take a look at the second part of the answer. It says obesity. Hmm. Think about it for a second. That if we have these femoral epiphyseal growth plates and they're very weak, right? And then we load them with a child that is very obese or a child who is overweight. Do you think that that places them at greater risk for having this slip capital femoral epiphysis, this slippage, this disconnection at the femoral neck area? Uh, absolutely. It's causing more mechanical stress. And that's really that principle that I need you to remember about this condition, at least, is the mechanical stress and the weakness of the area is what leads to having a skiffy. So bottom line, what am I saying? I love A right now. A is a good answer. Okay. Let's look at B, C, and D though. We don't want to just go off of that. Let's look at B. B says hyperthyroidism and proximal muscle weakness. I'm going to tell you why I don't like this answer. I know some of y'all chose it. So hold on. It says hyperthyroidism. And in hyperthyroidism, is the person typically overweight, obese, or are they typically smaller in nature? You know, uh, they even may have a, an additional connection with anorexia. They may be skinny. They may have a low BMI, something along the lines of that. Which one's more consistent with hyperthyroidism? Obesity and overweight or being smaller, all right, and a low BMI? The answer to that is the low BMI. So here's the thing. A patient with a hyperthyroidism, they're not likely to really show up with a skiffy it's just they're just not necessarily related to each other now if you had hypothyroidism where you have an endocrine problem the patient's starting to build up a lot of just 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 fatty tissue around the body but also there's a lot of weight gain of course that could lead now to a skiffy okay so hyperthyroidism increased metabolism Patients typically a lot smaller. When you're having hypothyroidism, patient typically comes obese or overweight. So bottom line, what am I saying? It's not likely that hyperthyroidism is a risk factor for slip capital femoral epiphysis. How about proximal muscle weakness? Uh, it's not one of major risk factors, but it could present. I mean, if you have a lot of weakness around the hip area, that could put a lot of undue stress on the femoral neck area and cause it. It's not one of the major factors. But bottom line, I'm going to get out B because I just don't like that hyperthyroidism part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and X that one out. Cool? Let's look at C. C says coxa valga. All right. Now, Cox of Alga, if you're not familiar with that, that's increased angulation of the femoral neck. Increased angulation. And for those of you live with me right now, I'll go ahead and draw that out for you a little bit. Give you a little look at what that would look like. So it's increased space. All right. In that area of the femoral neck, it's an increased angulation of the femoral neck. That's Cox of Alga. Is that a risk factor for Skiffy? No, it's not. Actually, the opposite is coxa vara, which is decreased angulation. All right. And so if you really, whether you're on the podcast right now or wherever you're at, if you go take a look at a patient with coxa vara, they have 
a decreased angulation, placing a lot of stress on, guess what, that femoral neck area. Cool? All right. So bottom line, what am I saying? C is not a risk factor. Coxa valga is not a risk factor for a skiffy. I'm Xing that one out. Let's go to D, our last one. Low body mass index or low BMI. Is that consistent or a risk factor with skiffy? I think we already talked about this, right? A child who's, who's, who's underweight, a child with low BMI is not going to be putting a lot of stress necessarily on that femoral neck area. And so guess what? <laughs> That's not a risk factor. And so I can eliminate D, leaving us with our best answer, our final answer of A, femoral retroversion and obesity. All right, congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. This is a tough one. Typically, when you're getting questions about this area of skiffy, you're comparing it to late cap perthes or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis or something like that and just trying to differentiate it. So I suggest definitely understanding the ins and outs of this condition and how it's different from the other ones. But sometimes you get questions about risk factors, examination findings. And you need to be able to be like, yeah, you know, that is consistent with slip capital femoral epiphysis. All right. That's consistent with leg cap perthes and be able to say those things like second nature. And so what I've done, I, I hate to just leave you with a basic explanation. I'm not going to do that. For those of you on the podcast, I made a cheat sheet to go along with this question right here. And I really break down Skiffy. Um, but I also break down Lake Caperthes right next to it so you can see the differences between the two. All right. So if you're on the podcast right now, go into the show notes, click the link in there and get that cheat sheet.